Okay, hello everyone for the quick uh, introduction to the challenge. We will just uh, immediately start. So as always, everybody, anybody uh, who has gone through the challenge document can raise your hand and share your understanding. So anyone who has gone through the document, okay, uh, go and get touch. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have gone through the document for some while, uh, and I have seen that the main objective of this week's challenge is to uh, work on backtesting or uh, crypto trading. Mm -hmm. Improvements or uh, for a better performance of uh, the trading. So we are going to uh, use some data before that have been traded before uh, for understanding the way that uh, the trading was gone through, so that we can uh, get some knowledge and we can use it for our uh, tradings for today or uh, for uh, other tradings that are going to be in the coming. Uh, days. So for this, we are going to use uh, four main text stacks, Apache Airflow, Apache Kafka, MLflow, and CML uh, Continuous Machine Learning. So we are going to uh, download trading data from uh, sites like y -Finance, uh, uh, Yahoo Finance, or we can use uh, the Binance to get some data that are uh, trading data that are uh, being done for so we can uh, implement it uh, in our challenge document. This challenge will start the uh, front end to interact with the uh, users that we are going to train for the uh, future. Uh, this is what I have seen uh, since uh, the morning. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Gitacho. That's uh, for the brief uh, explanation. So you are right. So you will be working on a backtesting infrastructure for crypto trading. So yeah, uh, Johannes, you can go. So yeah, my understanding is the same as Gitacho. I'm trying to build a back testing for to test a user idea, meaning that, for example, if a user want to buy a certain coin at certain price and want to sell at certain price, before doing it with his own money, he can check on our platform uh, from the past data uh, to see if it's profitable or not. So I have a question. Uh, the first one is, what is uh, exactly in multiple what testing means and the second one is when like what we consider we are consider are we considering the user will trade for short time like selling certain coin as certain time in selling in short period of time or are we considering the user will trade for longer time maybe if there is an increase on thousand or something like that because if we consider sh uh, short trading we can't have we don't need to have a large data set uh, large data in the circulation is considering the data how are we going to download them like so i i look at the binance data and it give us uh for i think a week so are we going to is there is a some way we can download a lot of data and are we considering only one coin or multiple multiple coin uh, history data when we download the history data those are my questions uh, okay so th thank you for the question so 
for downloading data, if Binance only allows you uh, or gives you a weak data, you can just uh, use Y Finance. So Yahoo Finance will give you a historic data, including the closing and opening prices of uh, a stock. So the idea here would be, uh, so you will not have the infrastructure in the time to build uh, to build a back testing infrastructure or and also a trading bot for all the coins. So it will be a dynamic one. So for example, at the end of your product, your user might just input uh, a stock symbol of, let's say just uh, Tesla. So we'll just try to do the back testing and also the analysis and the forecasting for that coin. Since you, you you can't have it uh, static statically stored because you that will need uh, storage and also that will need high computation power. And for other questions, it will be clear as uh, as we as we go through the challenge. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, uh, go, Mikael. Okay, uh, thank you from the document. I understand, I understand that we are going to build uh, a data pipeline for that uh, to make it easy for people to invest in cryptocurrency. And uh, the tasks we are supposed to do, I think, is uh, Download the historical data, then build a backend system to process and request and to store the back test results. I think, and after that, uh, we will, we will build a front end application so that the user can specify his parameters and get a back test uh, result. This is my understanding. So the question I have is like, uh, so if uh, we will run the back test results from our data. Right, using the different backtest methods like backtest, backtrader, pi algo trade, or something like that. So th then we will store it in the database. So uh, so that the, that the user run the backtest with different param parameters by itself, or that the user gives just his parameters and will get the backtest result from our data sheet that we trade and on. That's my first question. And the second one is. Uh, so, if you build the, the uh, if you are building a data pipeline, so does that mean the user will add can add uh, other uh, data big data big data into the system and get the the back test and other results as well? These are my two questions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thanks, Mikhail. Uh, for you. Uh, for the second question, uh, it will be it will complicate things if we accept data from the user. So we'll just it's better to accept symbols. So at the end of the day, it's, since it is trading, uh, it's better to accept uh, symbols. So for example, let's say the user might actually uh, submit wrong data or an incorrect data. Which will just, uh, which will just, uh, your system will end up actually interpreting the wrong thing because the user input was wrong. So it's better to fetch the data from Y Finance and Binance. And for your first question, can you just uh, remind me? That, um, Okay, uh, so uh, what we are doing is we run the backtest results by using our data sets, then using different backtest methods, right? Using backtrader, file yeah. good trade, or something like that. Then after that, we will store that uh, that result, backtest results, into our database. 
then does that mean the user asks the parameters, uh, enters the parameters and gets the backtest results uh, from our database? That's what we are doing. So what parameters are, are you thinking of? So is it are the, like the parameter are strategies or like other other parameters? Let's say for example, duration of some some sort. Like for example, in the data set for the Binance or the Yahoo, the, the user, for example, from this, uh, from 2023, June something, or uh, using this, uh, like Tesla's or Google's uh, stock, can I get something? So that if we, tra are we training for something like that? And the, ba the back test result will give him some insights or? So, uh, you will understand what strategies you should like are are correct and what indicators we should follow for uh, backtesting infrastructure and also to create training both. So you will consider those indicators. So you will just you will you will understand those as you go on. So, for example, to name a few, uh, let me just open up the references. So. As you can see in the references section, um, so you can see here we have seven indicators to build a trading toolkit. So you have like what are the indicators we should follow in order to create an, an, an efficient and effective trading toolkit. So, for example, we have average directional index. Uh, accumulation or distribution line so we have to understand you have to understand these indicators or which which of the indicators should we actually uh, follow and follow and uh, understand we have to like which of these indicators are a must to understand in order to create our end product in a way that the user inputs a stock symbol and we will just give it so for example based on these indicators we will give it a back tested uh a back tested response or forecast so we will, you will see in, as we go through the challenge document we added a few a few exciting things so that would be uh that would be your main goal so you have to understand the indicators first Is that clear, uh, Mickey? Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Okay, we will just uh, start. So now, uh, the main task would be to create uh, scalable box testing box testing infrastructure. So uh, there is a startup called Mela, which wants to make uh, the goal of Mela is to make it simple for everyone to enter the world of cryptocurrencies. So it, is, it also wants to give investors a reliable source of investment while lowering risk associated with trading cryptocurrencies. So and your task is to design build and to design and build a reliable large scale trading data pipeline so uh, um, as we all know uh, the past performance of any financial market is never uh, a good indicator or a reliable indicator which means uh, let's say for example a few days ago Bitcoin dropped to 64,000 and now it's up to 66,000. So you can't say it, you can't have a good reason to say or to decide Bitcoin will go up or the price of Bitcoin will go up or it will go down. So it's never a reliable indi indicator. So it's important to run back tests that simply simulate current and past particular situation as well as the trend over time so based on historical data 
we will we will have the understanding of how 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 was it and also based on the current one we can understand how it got here and now in using that we, we will have the chance to recognize the complex uh the complex systems that should be involved to actually build crypto trading systems so by the end of this project each group should have a robust data pipeline that can run various box tests and also store various useful artifacts and you will create a robust data warehouse system so that is the main uh, objective here and regarding the data you will uh, collect the data from binance uh, and yahoo finance so uh, if binance only gives you uh, a week long data you'll just use y finance because you can actually input the range uh, in y finance so after that now it's time to for you guys to di dive deep into each uh, each concepts and also each things that are involved in crypto in cryptocurrency and also in financial markets so for example you have you will ha you have to understand the what k line or can candlestick data is so for example if you have seen any image in let me just share my full screen if that helps okay i think it is visible right so as you can see here you you have a candlestick uh, chart definition in it what well, the basics explain so you can see the video here and also uh, you i think if any of you have opened the any trading app you 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 have this symbol you I, you have seen this symbol so as you can see here it means uh, the above means the highest price of the day and the below one of means the lowest price of the day and based on this we have uh, a filled candle light i mean if if a filled candlestick and the one with an empty candlestick which is actually means the opposite of this so the the closing price is more, much lower than the opening price so just try to go through the document and the references shared and try to understand each of each each concepts involved in this trading app so now uh, so the main goal would be uh, to create uh, backtesting infrastructure so you will have the skill at by the end of this uh, week you will have the skill to work with Kafka, email flow, CML, and and process streaming data, so which means using Kafka and building data pipelines and orchestration workflows. And for uh, let me just go through, let me just take you to the group. So you will we will you will be uh, in a group. So I think we will give you uh, an instance. So for that part. Mm, I think this is visible, right, to my screen. Okay, I think maybe if I'm having, let me just share the document. Okay, so uh, you will be uh, assigned to a group, so, and also an instance will be provided, but till then, make sure to understand each concepts very clearly and try to get uh, the most out of it so we will just try uh, to give you a uh, few days to understand the whole concept to understand the whole project and in the meantime there will be tutorial sessions so using those try to understand the challenge really well and yeah so now the fundamental tasks in this week's challenge would be you will work in a group so you'll design database schema you will have a database to store various artifacts so 
you get from the back testing and you will integrate integrate various machine learning operation tools and build front end for your uh, back test for your infrastructure and you will have test pipeline and you will report it on a blog as always so the first task is back testing so what is back testing so now as mentioned earlier in any historical data is not uh, good enough to predict the future one because as we all know crypto trading is so volatile we, we can't actually say oh this bitcoin will go up we can't actually say tesla will go up, will go will rise the value of tesla will rise or not it's hard to say so now you will understand what, what the fundamental differences between technical analysis and also fundamental analysis so which means in back testing there are strategies so what 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 are you trying to achieve are you trying to do technical analysis or are you trying to do fundamental analysis and also why why do we need back testing so most of the references are from investopedia so you can just go to uh, through them and so also you can just ha get the definitions get the explanation of each concept there so for example for the back testing part what is the importance of back testing so there is the key component of it any effective trading systems so which means you will try to accomplish some something by reconstructing the historical data and you'll try to actually understand what would happen if we if we have done something in that so the underlying theory in here would be any strategies that worked well in the past is likely to work well in the future so as you now you have to understand we only have the historical data so now we, we can't just only play in the historical data and try to manipulate it in a way that that would help us achieve our goal or achieve our uh, uh, our end uh, idea so for example if, if our end idea or goal is to invest in it so we'll just try to back, back test by intervening and uh, investing something so so for example it if it worked well in the past which means let's say we invested hundred dollars in a particular time so now we have to understand what was the time why why that was the case so as i've mentioned most the, the you have to understand volatility measures and also the exposures so unrealized return and also risk risk adjust adjusted returns so risk risk adjusted returns are a person a percentage is return as a function of risk so try to understand the whole concept of back testing infrastructure back testing softwares and also the whole concept of uh, crypto trading and the next would be to download the candlestick uh i mean to, to understand what candlestick is and also k line and k line means just as i've mentioned earlier the candlestick so for example when you are seeing uh, a closing day what what the color represents what the shape of the candle or the structure of the candle represents you have to understand that in order for in order for you to have somehow uh, domain knowledge of, of that and now the next would be running a multiple back test using different technical indicators so we have the indicators you have to, you have understood the indicators the seven indicators to create a trading bot so now you will move on to uh back test on those so your indicators can range from uh, some moving uh, average uh, so for example you, you you can see what is the purpose of moving average uh, formulas and examples so there in the investopedia references you can actually understand what moving average is and what can we understand about moving average that can help us to uh, as an input in this in in this infrastructure so the next would be to generate the following uh, 
important metrics. So, for example, number of trades, winning trades, losing trades, max drawdown, and chart ratio. And after that, now you, you can create a scene. So, for example, you, you will, uh, as mentioned earlier, you will define su such some parameters. And uh, that if you're speaking, we don't hear you. Okay, this is probably facing some technical issue. Just let's be patient for a bit. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Sorry about the uh, mishap. I had a connection problem. Okay, uh, let's just continue from. Uh, I think uh, you lost me at running multiple bug testing using different uh, different technical indicators. So now the next uh, would be uh, to generate uh, metrics. So which means uh, what was the return, what are, what were the number of trades, and also uh, what how many were the winning trades, losing trades, and max drawdown, and also sharp pressure. And the next part would be to uh, use uh, to create parameters. So for example, date range. So. To apply those indicators, what what is the date range? And I mean, to use those in such indicators in what date range, and also the indicators parameter range. So you will use those indicators and try to test your uh, testing uh, using the tools like Bug Trader, Vector Bot, and Break Trade. And also try to go through the documentation too. And the next would be to to develop your overview of your approach and document it. So make sure to document everything. And okay. now uh, now you have the backtesting part sorted out. So now the next would be to build a backend for your for processing the request. So so processing the request that comes from the user. And now you you have to update your data modeling techniques. So which means uh, try to understand database schema for example like normalization of first normal form second normal form third normal form towards the normal form and try to understand how to design in such a way that it follows such conventions and rules and after designing the schema now the next would be to create a flask or fast api or not just whichever suits you but we will, we will still suggest a fast api and the flask api because in such a way, if you are using in Python or uh, your trader is in Python and you are using uh, Node.js, you will have to set up an API and that would be more work. So let's just try to focus on uh, Flask and Fast API for now. So and next would be uh, to take instance and run back tests. So now you, you create a module that actually check if backtesting result for a specific range exists within the same same parameter so as was we mentioned based on your indicators and also the uh, range for those indicators you will you have created or you have uh, you have created a scene so which means each scene will have its own structure and its own parameters in a way that uh, if if you have encountered the same 
uh, structures you won't create another scene you'll just use the result from that scene and just return the result but if 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 any result from the database uh, are not found there you run it and um, make sure to create an authentication now it's time to integrate machine learning into your uh, into the workflow now you'll use kafka so you apache kafka to receive scenes that will contain the parameters of your backtest so you will only publish it if you have to run a backtest again if not you will just fetch it so pub pub publish your backtest result that exist in the database to kafka so you kafka will just understand it and will give you um, new or not so publish new result into your kafka cluster and also you will automate the backtest runs and other tasks using airflow now the next would be to integrate ml flow using uh, the provided database so for example you have a remote store now so now you will automate your tracking of your backtest in various and various generated metrics now uh, and also continuous machine learning integration to run various parties algorithms algorithmic chains so using github actions you run those and you'll uh, build a front end at the end you'll build a front end for running your backtest and the next would be to create an index fund or trading bot so try to uh, Try to understand the references here too. So now create you'll create an algorithm which selects the best backtested strategy and implements a recommendation based uh, based on some combination of best returns, uh, highest ratio or lowest drawdown, which means any combination of your choosing can be applied here. And the next would be to create an index of 10 biggest crypto coins by market capitalization. So for example, you start from uh, you can start from any of the crypto coins and the next would be uh, from for the index fund to be recapitalized and recapitalized every month based on the updated total capitalization of all the coins so for example you have to create portfolio of coins so you will understand these whole concepts as you read more and as you uh, dive deeper which means now it will be much clearer how to do it, how to do each each and every task. So make sure to go through uh, how to uh, what is the theory of modern portfolio and also any other theories that can be applied. And so, for example, to create a, mod a model for modern portfolio in Python, how to create it, what are the tools required. You can just go through the the references listed here and also you can just read more on your own and the next would be integrating a, a language model for time series forecasting so we have listed some uh, interesting papers here from amazon and also from salesforce you can just go through uh, those and how to actually understand language models in in terms of time series so how to uh, how language models can understand time series it's not just uh, understanding the difference between each items it's just uh, actually for understanding enough and also giving it an efficient prompt which means uh, by prompt in this case it's how you articulate your data how you articulate your input so for example you have a week long of um, close and opening values for some some coin or for some stock for some stock symbols. So how do you articulate this data clear enough for an language for a language model to understand it and to actually forecast it in a in a much more um, much more sensible way. So the final task would be that and as always you will have uh, reported to in a blog. So make sure to use medium or uh, yeah, we, we suggest media, so uh, the auto grader can, because the auto grader understand it more, it can be passed more easily. So, uh, 
and you will have introduction to backtesting, financial market backtesting, fiat currencies and stock market cryptocurrencies and what is technical analysis, fundamental analysis in in aspect of uh, cryptocurrencies in stock market. You will be this session will be given by Rahmat and on Tuesdays we will see backtesting frameworks and database schema design. But for the database schema de design, since we uh, it has been given one or I mean, two or three times, we will, it will be uh, an introduction to Kafka. So I will just uh, edit it quickly. So uh, that will be given by Rahmat in backtesting for frameworks like uh, Backtrader, Fairtrader, and Vector BT would be given by Rahmat. And advanced topics in Kafka such as sync, source, scenes would be given by Antenna. And large language models, I mean la language models for uh, forecasting would be given by Antenna. So uh, this, this week's challenge is a two weeks challenge so two weeks challenge meaning it will uh, you will have three submissions uh, I, I will uh, add the, the second interim submission detail uh, in the document so you will have an interim as always on wednesday and your interim two would be on saturday and the final submission will be on wednesday 26th of june so make sure to work well in your groups and make sure to understand each concept. So as uh, we will have a presentation starting from Thursday, uh, I mean, starting from uh, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, or we will just make it a Thursday and Friday. We'll just make it Thursday and Friday. So we will have presentation on Thursdays and Friday. So make sure each member is really involved in this project and you helped each other. So, yeah, we'll add some details on the submission part and we have listed some uh, key references here. So you can just go through each and try to understand. So till the instance are provided and your groups are listed in the document and we will announce it in Slack. So make sure you are reading and uh, investing your time in the, in the whole concepts and on the whole reference. So at in Wednesday end of day, we will uh, provide you in, with instances. So starting from that, uh, try to work in groups. So maybe uh, for the interim submission, interim Wednesday part, we will, we will not have any uh, GitHub link submissions. So we will have a GitHub link submission on interim two and also for final submission. So on Wednesdays, you will have, you will only submit uh, a, a PDF report. So we'll just, uh, I will just edit the document to, uh, to articulate that clearly. Is that clear? Uh, go on, okay. Okay, in the in task five, uh, I think there are three parts. So, do we choose and work on one of them, or do we should we do it three of them? Because I, I uh, the three of them are different. I think. Uh, okay, uh, try to uh, start from the easier part. So, if you have time, you'll just go through the all the three, uh, all the three points. Start from one, and if you have finished that, just uh, go to the second point, and you just go to the, three, the third point. It depends on how much time you have, or how much time you can manage. Uh, okay, uh, Abdul Rahmat. Uh, okay. Uh... For now, I don't have uh, understanding for what backtest is it, uh, is it exactly. So uh, what's the final product should look like? I mean, what the user should should get from uh, from this project? 
Okay, so the point of back testing is to actually test what works in the past, what have worked in the past. So since we we can't actually time travel to the future and that's the price or no no actually the result, the only option we have is an, an, an historical data. So on that historical data, we can actually uh, try to invest on that. So for example, let's say you have a week long of uh, Google, Google's uh, historical data movement. So now you will, uh, uh, you will know when to actually trade on it, when to buy, when to sell, and you will have those strategies uh, covered, uh, I mean, understood based on that historical data. So that's just back testing. So now, what, what have worked in the past, you'll understand it. And also, it depends on all the indicators or the goals you have, but based on those goals, you will just try to understand what have worked in the past. That's bas the basic definition of backtesting. So the end goal would be, let's say, uh, the user input some stock symbol. And using that stock symbol, uh, you will uh, try to fetch uh, try to fetch historical data and run backtesting on it. But uh, if 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 that is too uh, too complex to do that, you will have. You, let's say you collected. So you are in a group. So some of the members actually are collecting the data from my finance. So let's say you have a year long of uh, a year long data for the top ten. Uh, the top ten, let's say, stock uh, stock symbols. So for example, it might be Tesla, Google, Meta, and Others. So now you use those data and you create a drop-down at the end. So someone will just choose, let's say, meta, and they use they give you some parameters. And based on those parameters, if you have already run a back test on those, your Kafka should return the result of those those things. So based on the returns, you will just try to represent those results for the user based on the indicators based on the, the desired indicators chosen by the user. Is that clear, Rob Drama? Yeah, it's it's kind of clear. And after some reading, I think it will be uh, clear. Okay, uh, make sure to go through all the documentations and all the references. Uh, okay, Yabez? Okay, just uh, to ask if you can give us a tip on how to divide the task among uh, our group mates. Okay, I will just suggest uh, by the by now you everybody knows their strengths and weaknesses, right? So let's say yeah, this you are much more uh, you have a stronger uh, capability on the back end and on the Kafka part. So it's better for you to actually utilize that skill in this group. And someone who is actually good in front end will do the front end part. And someone who is really good in uh, in understanding and reading things will have will focus on all the actual concepts and also all the all the orchestration behind it. So try to actually understand your strengths, each member's strengths, and utilize it in a way. That, that is efficient and effective. Since you only have around nine or 10 days, so try to actually use it in, in that way. Okay, anybody else uh, who have any questions or any uh, any issues? Okay, Larry, go on.
Um, Hilary, if you're speaking, I can't hear you. Yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, um, on, on task five, on, could you elaborate on the MPT model portfolio theory? Like, um, uh, yeah, what, what is it essentially? Uh, and, it, and can it, and like, can you see it after the final implementation? Because it, it's saying create portfolio. So, is it like going to appear on the front end? And what's the essence? Like, if you reduce it into terms, maybe I can understand. Maybe can you uh, articulate it clearly? Like I, I, I don't understand your question clearly. Uh, okay, so the we are told to create portfolio of coins using MPT. So, um, so I, I'm assuming those are like I saw the the crypto coins, and uh, like what is what is the is it like Binance where you have the coins there on the pay, on certain page and and they are and like the 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 highs and lows or do they show that the optimal composition? So uh, like what is it essentially? What is MPT so, so for example, uh, let's say you collected all the data from the for the top 10 coins so you run uh back testing on those data sets on those on on the data sets of those, those coins now you understand which strategies to choose and also for for and for each uh indicator so for example you have you you you, ha you understood now which has high risk which has low risk and also uh or which which back testing uh back testing was successful and which of the indicators are actually worked on which coins now since you have Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, I think uh, I had a few connection miss out. Now, can you hear me a bit? Yeah, we can. Okay, uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, yeah, so the next would be now since you understood all the all the all the results clearly. Now the next would be to go through. You'll and you'll just try to, try to read on the uh, references. So, for example, what is modern portfolio to, uh, theory and uh, how to actually in, to use it for investing or or how to use it in order to understand which coins will have a lowest risk and which coins will have the highest sharp ratio or most of the things that that your back testing result would give you. So it, it, it's just interpreting, interpreting, I mean, interpreting uh, the results. So just in modern portfolio, it's just a method that can be used uh, to avoid risk and construct diversified portfolios. So which means that now you have the 10 coins, right? So so in index funds, so for example, you, you might shuffle between those coins. So you know when to sell, you know, uh, what to sell. So in your strategy, so for example, let's say your backtesting results gave you, you have to sell on Wednesday. So, and also based on those 10 coins, you will know after selling this coin, which coin you should buy. So based on that, you have you have low risk. So for example, you, you the risk of your, you losing the money is much lower since you, you are playing around with uh, 
uh, some of some some of the top coins, and also you you are you run back testing, which means you know what I've what actually worked on the past. So based on that, you know when to sell. You know like what what you see when to, like when you sell. So for example, let's say based on just if you are really an expert on this matter, you'll just have to see the graph and know when when to sell. So that that will that will that skill will be uh, given to you by the backtesting infrastructure. So so for example can be useful for in your your platform can be useful for investors who are actually trying to construct efficient and diversified portfolios. So for example, now we have uh, you have acceptable risk, so for, which means now, let's say you have the the market will the or the price will be lower in in some days, but it will actually rise up way way up in 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 few days after that now you have uh, the variance here or what what you can actually conclude as an acceptable risk so for example losing that money might be acceptable in order to gain more so you'll actually try to uh, represent this in a, in a way that in a way that it is understandable enough for for everyone who who actually can invest on some coins so you have the 10 coins and based on that you run some back back testing based on few parameters and indicators so now from those results you'll actually try to interpret and create the index fund for those 10 coins uh is that clear Hilary? yes that is that is clear thank you uh, I'll keep, I'll keep the other reference as well. Uh, okay. So we uh, we actually uh, decided to give you more time in uh, understanding the concepts and reading more. So that's why we actually are decided to give you till Wednesday. There will be a lot more reading and communicating between your team members and after the instances given it's just going to be work working on the back testing working on everything that you have built up till wednesday i know it's just three days but if you use it wisely since you are in a group it's it's a lot of time Any other question? Okay, go on, Hilary. So I haven't looked at the data yet, but yeah, my question is like when you are creating the schema, do we like look at the structure and then add hard coded the code? Like uh, sometimes we can import it and we with like we can import it and it will be created automatically. So what could be the approach that we will have to take? Um, okay, for that part, so you 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 might have uh, two different distinct data. So for example, you have the historical data and also you will have the result for the scenes you created, which means the scenes in this case represents the, your parameters and your results. So for those results, you will have uh, some, some schema and for the historical data, you will have some schema. So for the historical data part, you can just uh, hard code it, but for the result part it's better to create it uh, dynamically but if since it's an sql it might be it might complicate things but okay, so just try to run few few uh, back tests and 
try to understand what the results would look like in based on that try to create your schema so you will have a more structured and robust schema now so after your, your back testing is complete you'll just dump it to your database Okay, that's clear. Uh, and then another uh, question is AWS AWS, uh, I'm saying it's AWS managed service. Is it the instance will get around the tables? Or is it like uh, the, dat the database or uh, um, was it saying create tables on AWS AWS cloud? Oh, we will uh, give you an instance. Okay. It will be the same as last time. It, it might not have, uh, I don't think it will have any GPUs because the uh, GPU will not be required for this case. You'll just have to in, do an inference on it. So just hosting them, the language models won't require any, uh, that much of memory on it. Oh, just try. It will be uh, uh, just an instance for now. Uh, go on, Daisy. Uh, uh, what data range should we use for the time period for selecting the data? Uh, come again. What date range should we use, like with time period? How many years back? Uh, let's say using last year's data will not be that efficient. It will just, uh, it will just take a lot of composition power. So try to use at least last six months or some, like try to start from last six. Months, if if you don't have any, uh, I think I'm back. Uh, can you hear me? No. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, my internet is really screwing me around. Okay. Uh, Daisy, can I can actually repeat your I question? I was asking about the amount of time for the okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So for that part, you, I suggest you just start from. Uh, six months and if you if your backtesting actually worked uh, efficiently you can increase the time but let's just start from that and if not try to reduce it uh, for uh, by a month so for example if six months that can't work or won't work try five months four months three months Uh, is that clear or did? Yes, thank you. Okay, any other question?
Okay, so uh, we will have uh, another uh, maybe Q and A or some sort on Wednesday, and you'll share your progress there, and we'll try to clear any uh, any blockers and any issues you are facing. Okay, thanks guys, uh, the academy team, we can stop the recording here.